Hello everybody, it's Leaf. Well, the update Knives Out is live and there's a lot of story in it. And questions like, who is the Duval spy and what's going on with the water and what really happened to Logan's dad actually get answered. But of course, I'm not going to be talking about that. Heaven forbid I ever discuss important stuff. Obviously, I'm going to be talking about Fang because he's got a new romance quest. So I just got it. By the way, spoilers. Okay, so to start the quest, we can't already be dating Fang because it only activates when we give him the heart knot for the first time. So yeah, if you're already dating him, you gotta fish out that old save. Okay, so we give him the heart knot and initially he just accepts it and it's clear that he doesn't understand the significance of such a gift. We leave slightly surprised, but the next day we get a letter in which he explains that indeed he didn't understand what it meant and he sends the heart knot back. Ouch. Well, we can go to see him and try to give him the heart knot again, now that he knows what it means, uh, but yet again he refuses. Clearly something is not quite right because he says this. I... I'm not worth it. Everyone around me suffers. But he doesn't elaborate and just tells us to go away. Please. Go. The next morning we get a note from him that says, Come for a checkup. Emotions can affect your physical health. Okay, so we go to the clinic because we're still kind of hopeful. Fang obviously feels guilty and the conversation here can go a couple of different ways. But of course, the result is always going to be the same. No matter what we say, we don't gain or lose relationship points here. Basically, we can be either understanding, disappointed or dramatic. And his replies will vary slightly, but it doesn't change the outcome. So what we say only sets the tone of the conversation. But I can tell you that some things make more sense than others, especially given the next stage of the quest. And that detail finally made me think about this whole story and how it works. And I'm going to talk about it in the next video, which is coming very soon. I have things to say. Uh, just a quick explanation. I decided to hide part of the screen here, even though I said there will be spoilers, because this is not a part of Fang's story. It's a spoiler for the main story. So, you know, just in case. Anyway, we can be nice and dignified or go ballistic. Either way, he eventually lets his true feelings be known. No! I don't hate you! Of course not. I really love you. Oops. <laughs> if we press him, he denies it in the most C-drama way known to man. You heard wrong. Yeah, right. Generally, the more emotional we are, the more helpless and all over the place uh, he gets. Who? There's someone else? No. No. L listen. To me. You're not just a friend. In any case, finally he gets completely overwhelmed and, again, tells us to leave. Now, how we react to that still changes nothing, but the third and fourth option, especially the fourth one, makes no sense whatsoever because the next day, this happens. <laughs> Here. But I heard your voice coming from the train. So yeah, if we chose the fourth option and we told him we are here if you want to talk, there's no reason for him to think we're leaving. In fact, if we select any other option, it makes more sense. And the more dramatic we get, the better. But never mind, let's say he did actually think he heard our voice on the train. So now he tells us his whole story, why he thinks he's not suitable to enter a relationship. He tells us his father was a married man when he met Fang's mother, which didn't stop him and she didn't know, of course. He left, Fang was born or the other way around. In any case, she ended up with a kid and a broken heart. When she went to find the father of her child, his wife apparently gave her some money and told her to leave them alone. 
Uh, by the way, Fang's father is a noble, which makes Fang an illegitimate son of a noble. How can you get any more tropey than that? Well, then, as we know, Fang's mother got sick and eventually died. Meanwhile, his father stayed away and didn't care to see how his second family was doing. After Sarnai's death, Fang and X lived on the streets until they were found and brought to live with Fang's father and his family. Fang, in pure Cinderella fashion, was despised and tormented by his stepmother and her son almost to the breaking point. His father, manipulated by his family, didn't believe him when Fang tried to complain. Which generally shows, I think, that Fang's father is a very weak-willed, comfortable man. Arguably, he is not entirely bad because he didn't let his son wander the streets and he wasn't directly cruel to him, but it doesn't make him good either. He was self-indulgent and evidently not interested enough to care, or terribly henpecked, or all of the above. I am low-key sensing a separate drama in here somewhere, but there's not enough info on that, so I'm not gonna talk about it. Anyway, Fang grew up in such an environment, resented, isolated and psychologically tortured for years. Eventually, he went to study medicine and he never returned home. Now, there are a couple ways we can react to what Fang tells us, and depending on how we go about it, we can earn a varying number of friendship points. He won't tell us how exactly he was tormented, though, even if we ask. This was obviously a huge trauma for him and X. And so he thinks that because he's been so badly broken by his experience, it is impossible for him to be with someone. On the other hand, it's obvious he wants nothing more than to be with the builder. But since he's convinced he shouldn't, it completely short-circuits his emotions, so all we get is a staggering number of mixed signals. In any case, we can, at this point, either peacefully back out of the whole thing, which will end the conversation, or we can try to convince him that we really care about him, which only makes him push us away completely and leave after spouting yet another classic C drama line. I always say Fang's a romantic Asian drama fangirl's wet dream, and that line only confirms it. Goodbye. May we meet again. In another life. Anyway, that triggers a very uh, dramatic cutscene, but be prepared because it involves a very unexpected and short quick time event that basically allows us to run after him. <laughs> And so, he is suddenly convinced that relationship is a great idea, in fact it's such a great idea that he hopes it's gonna be forever. We can still back out of it, even at this point, but that only results in him saying that he'll wait for us forever if need be. <sighs> you speak of eternity so eagerly, my friend. Forever is a very long time. But of course we can also accept him and bam, we've got a happy ending, Gaudeamus, Pax Vobiscum and so on and so forth. I don't think that's the end of his story, because he's still traumatized and sick and we didn't have a proper revenge arc, right? Right? Um, and I am almost certain there will be another romance quest, this time about marriage. It's not here yet, but I mean, you don't get the dev's favorite NPC without quests surrounding every single significant thing that happens to them. Plus, there's still the matter of the suspended medical trials. And in case you were wondering, yes, you can still give him the hard knot, even if you've backed out, or if you failed the quick time event. He can still accept it, you can still be together, and you still get his relationship gift, a, a love token if you will, which is a swan necklace by the way. But if you don't run after him, you will not get the entire cutscene. Okay, so what do I think about it? Well, the short answer is it went exactly where I didn't want it to go. Fang seems, and this is gonna be cruel on my part, he seems weak, confused, and he can't even follow what he believes is right and properly sacrifice himself for the good of the person he loves. Dude, all that I can't only works if you actually don't, at least for longer than three days. It took Fenris from Dragon Age three years before he went from I can't to no, actually I can. Okay, but I jest. That's a joke. In games like Sandrock, we don't usually want to spend too much time on convincing our favorite NPC to date us, so I get it. I even understand it all fits the story and Fang's personality, and it's just as dramatic as it should be. Is it the type of drama that I wanted? No. Is it something that I can live with? Absolutely. Will this shift my interest to other NPCs? 
Yes, probably. But that's on me. When it comes to dramatic characters and storylines, especially romantic ones, I simply prefer something colder and more reserved. But I have thoughts on that too, and I am already making another video in which I'll overanalyze not Fang as a character, well, that too, but first and foremost, the expectations, and I'll try to explain what I think is the main purpose of Fang's story, and how we probably should look at it. And it took me quite a while to understand this. Anyway, that's gonna be it for now. This is what the newest part of Fang's story looks like, and I see you in the next video very soon. Thanks for watching, and take care.